Hello everyone, welcome back. Please comment, rate, subscribe, folks. Comment, rate, subscribe, like the videos. Also share the videos. I wanna thank everyone that does watch, like, and share my videos. You folks are the absolute best. It's time to talk about it, all right? This Jets draft class, I'm ready to get into it with you folks. I'm gonna cover from round two down, uh, just throughout our picks. Some of these players I'm gonna talk about a little bit more than others. I'm not gonna cover the undrafted uh, you know, signings that we may make because it's a lot of them and they're, they could come fast. And so, you know, there'll be other videos for stuff like that. But this, again, is just our rounds and some of the moves we made. So I want you folks to comment down below right now. Let me know how you folks feel about this class and about this draft. Do you think Joe Douglas did what he needed to do here? Do you think enough holes were filled? So I want to I get you folks' thoughts on that before I start. But So I'm going to start round two. I'm going to start with our selection round to Mims. Listen, I like this kid. I did not think he was going to be there. We selected. We actually traded down um, and actually picked up a, a third round pick from the Seahawks. And we traded down and was still able to get him. Now, I will say initially, when Joe traded down out of that spot, I was like, hmm. Because Mims was one of the guys that I was hoping that we would target. So when he traded down, I was like, does he just not want him? <laughs> do we not see that we have, you know, a need at wide receiver? Is it someone else that they're targeting at this point? What's going on here? You know, I, 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 st I kept the faith. I figured he had maybe another wide receiver in mind that he was targeting, and maybe he was just kind of backing away from Mims. But as the board played out, Mims was still there, uh, you know, when we were at our selection. And he took him. And I, I couldn't be happier um, because, one, this really shows kind of a change of guard here between our general managers. If you look at – if Mike McCagney was in that situation last year and he would have traded down, we would have got fleeced. We got completely fleeced. <laughs> he probably would have traded down for like a six-round pick and a bag of chips, and that would have been it. And Joe Douglas got some really solid value when he traded down, and he still got his guy. You know what I'm saying? It was a very, that, that, you know, it took a lot of stones to make that move. He rolled the dice and he stepped up and said, hey, I'm ready for whatever happens. And he was still able to get Mims, as I said. So Mims comes in, he's a 63 wide receiver, big catch radius. This guy is a fast kid as well. Um, I like him. I think he ran like a 4-3-8 or something like that at the combine. This guy can move, you know what I'm saying? The knock on him, I know somebody says that the drops, he's had, you know, quite a bit of drops. But listen. We have wide receiver coaches here that are going to be able to get him up to speed and get him go, get him going. So the next level of coaching, I think, is really going to, you know, help this kid along. He's also, again, going to grow within his route running as well. But again, I think a lot of fans that have those knocks on those players, you also got to keep in mind that, uh, you know, these kids come in and they're not as polished as, you know, you would think. Uh, everyone has something they have to come in and work on. But this kid is a playmaker. He made a lot of plays, you know, in college. He absolutely did his thing. So I really, really like the selection. I like where we got him. He was a steal of a pick as far as I'm concerned. Because I remember pre-draft, people were saying that he was probably going to go bottom of the first, you know, or easily early second. Like he would never be there where he was at. And we were still able to get this kid. So he joins a wide receiver core where I look at it and I say, okay, Mims is here. We got, you know, Bernard Perrion. We got, uh, you know, Quincy Anuma, who's still a question mark. I know people are kind of, you know, hindering on him. But the thing is, is that Quincy Anuma, spinal stenosis, serious deal. I don't know if we can depend on him. And even if he does play, dude, he's missed so much time every season due to injury. It's like, can you really count on him to be there? Crowder, I think, is a solid, you know, slot receiver we all know. And you got Dotson, you got Vincent Smith, and you got Barrios. Again, I love the selection of Mims. I just wanted more wide receivers in this draft. And I know we're going to, I mean, you know, everybody knows if you're a Jets fan, you watch it. But I know we're going to cover the rest of this draft. But I just wanted more wide receivers. I did. I wanted more at it. That's why, to be honest with you, when I saw C.D. Lamb slide to 17, <laughs> I was hoping for a move to be made, baby. <laughs> hoping for a move to be made that's all i'm gonna say you know what i'm saying but i'll tell you what you know cd went to them boys you know he's he's wearing that star right now but man whoo i was hoping for a move to be made but anyway 
with Mims in this, uh, you know, wide receiver depth here, I like it. I like the move. I, again, this gives Sam, you know, it's really giving him a solid weapon. But I just wish we added more pieces there at wideout because I think we need more. I'm not, you know, Shot Perry, I, mean, I think he's, you know, he's a guy that can come in and do some things. But I don't know really what to expect out of him. Dotson and other guys, a first-round bust. I like Crowder. I like Crowder. But outside of that, it's like, who's, you know, the guy that's really going to be able to step in and really have some impact. So comment down below. Let me know what you folks think about Mims and his selection. So I'll move on to round three. Again, we made a trade with the Seahawks. We were able to pick up a third round. So we got some picks uh, coming up here in round three. So round three, woohoo! they select safety Ashton Davis. I know some of y'all <laughs> was not necessarily like happy with this. There were some fans that were upset. And there were some fans that were going, what does this mean? You know what I'm saying? I look at this kid, Ashton Davis. He plays everywhere, dude. I mean, he does everything. He could be a dime safety, a strong safety, free safety. I, you know, people were talking about him possibly playing corner this year. I mean, this kid is solid. You know what I'm saying? And I think that this was a good pick as well. Uh, we can come in and run a lot of three safety sets, especially with him. He is a Swiss Army knife. Like, he can do it all. Um, I know a lot of people are looking at the situation and going, hey, does this mean we're going to are, are, is Adams definitely going to get traded? Mm, I don't know. Maybe he's an insurance policy uh, for the safety position period. I know uh, there's also people that are looking at it as well. Marcus May uh, may be a guy that they're saying, hey, we like you, but can we really invest? If they decide to give Adams the type of deal that he's asking for, can we really invest that much money you know, in the safety position with you as well? Because we know we're going to have to pay you too, and you're coming up on the last year of your deal. So... This may be an insurance policy just on a safety position, period. Um, just in case, you know, things get rattled. Maybe May moves on. They give Adams that huge deal he's looking for. Okay, this is a kid that can kind of roll into that cover safety role and we won't be, you know, falling off of a cliff after, you know, our best cover safety is out of here. So, yeah, I like the selection. Um, I think he's a kid that really can bring it. Um, I'm really looking forward to seeing him on the field uh, doing the thing defensively for us. So, Moving on down, you know, this third round, we, we signed Jabari Zungia. Man, let me tell you something. This is a kid that's interesting as well. I like him. Um, I think he's a guy that can come and give us a little bit of edge pressure. The problem with him, though, is the injuries. I know he battled a lot of injuries in, like, 2017. He played through some of them, but it affected him. You know what I'm saying? So if he can come here and stay on the up and up and we can, you know, make sure that he's, he's good uh, physically and he's not, you know, battling those nagging injuries, he's a, a kid that I could see making some, some impact. And again, he's joining, you know, a, a, a much needed spot on this roster because we don't have a pass rusher. Like we really don't. I know a lot of people are great that are raving about uh, Jordan Jenkins coming back. But I mean, when you look at it, Jordan Jenkins is probably the closest we have to an actual pass rusher. I know, Harry Anderson was a guy that we were hoping would really step up, and we really haven't seen that type of production from him as well. Hell, people were screaming about Jamal Adams. Might be our best pass rusher at some point. I know he was up there in sacks, but he's a safety. You know, he's not an actual pass rusher. So this kid may be able to come in and really give us some production here, and I'm all for it. But if he stays healthy, I think he can really have an impact. And he's also a guy that's a, you know, a high-character guy. He's got a great attitude. I know some people were... Comparing him to draft picks of the past, I'm not going to go into that. But this kid, you know, from everything that, you know, all reports, everything from the coaching staff that of the school he went to, dude, he's on the up and up. And so I'm excited to see him. And again, we just got to worry about the injury factor with him. So hopefully he can keep it all together. We made another trade um, and we were able to pick up two fourth rounders. We actually made a trade with the Patriots. This is crazy. Like Joe Douglas was wheeling and dealing. You know, he treats... Any team like they're just any team. It doesn't matter. In division, out of division, whatever. If you can help me, then, hey, let's make a deal. And if you can't, I'll see you around. You know what I'm saying? So he was able to make a trade with the Patriots. He got two fourth rounders back. So my next pick that I want to talk about, whew, we pick him up in round four, Mr. P. Ryan. Listen, man, I like this kid. I remember, you know, I watched him. Uh, you know, once or twice before, and I was like, man, this this back is a is a guy that can really, you know, make some plays. He can move. I love this selection, and I do because, look, I know we rave about Le'Veon Bell. We do. But outside of him, we have no running back depth. Uh, you know, Ty Montgomery, Bilal Powell, not here. We need someone to come in and spell when Le'Veon Bell, you know, is taking that breather. He can't play every single down. He can't. So we're going to need somebody 
excuse me, that's going to be able to come in and really do what they need to do. And I think he's a kid that can do that. He can catch the football out the backfield. He's got decent hands. Um, you know, he's also a guy that I think is a solid runner. I know that there was a big knock on him that he ran kind of slow at the combine. I think they said he ran like a 4-6. But if you watch the tape on this kid, if you watch him run, like the games that I've watched him, Dude, he pulls away from people. I think he's much faster in pads, and I think we've also seen that as well in the past where athletes will come in to the combine. They won't run as fast as some people think that they should run, and then all of a sudden, ooh, they're slow. It's like you forget all the years of tape that you have on these dudes pulling away you know, in pads and a helmet from the rest of these guys that are trying to chase them. And if you look, I'm telling you, there's some clips on this kid where he is moving. I mean, I've watched him. I have absolutely watched him. So I like him. I like the move. I think you can come in and really help us out as well. And we also know that seems like, you know, Adam Gaze isn't necessarily that fond of Le'Veon Bell. There are definitely times throughout the season where he did not use him or, you know, pretty much most of the season he didn't use him effectively. So maybe P. Ryan is a guy that can come in and step in and he's like a Gaze back. Maybe this is the kind of back that Adam Gaze wants in his system. So, again, I like him. I like his ability to, to make catches. Um, and I like his movement. He's a really shifty back man. And like I said, I don't think he's as slow as others, you know, are trying to make him out to seem. So moving along again, we talk about the next fourth round pick, Morgan. Now this, with all due respect, I love Joe Douglas. Loved him, love what he's done so far in the draft. But this was kind of a head scratcher for me. Because I said, okay, if you looked at all the needs on this football team, I'm talking about we had a lot of drastic needs. We needed wide receiver help. We needed offensive line help. You look at the defensive side of the ball. Um, you know, you looking, hey, we need corner help. We need pass rushers. Uh, you know, we need, we need. There's a lot of needs here. And to me, backup quarterback, although, you know, yeah, I could see it being a need, absolutely. But in the fourth round, you know, when you look at all the needs that you have, especially a corner in the fourth round, you know, so that was my question. Um, I do like this kid though. He's, he's had some issues. I know people have spoken about his accuracy issues and stuff like that, but you know, I think he's a guy that can come in and, you know, be a quality backup, uh, at this point. And I understand from Joe Douglas's standpoint, you know, that backups, backup QBs can, you know, be very effective. You know, they can come in and win you a game and keep you from losing a game. You know what I'm saying? I get that. I understand that. And I understand that Joe Douglas comes from the Eagles. They won a Super Bowl with a backup quarterback. So I understand that backup quarterbacks mean something. I get that around the league. I understand that. But I just was wondering in the fourth with, again, wide receiver for me being a big need going into the draft. It's like, you know, can we take another wide receiver? There were some guys there that I was like, oh, I really want to get these guys in there. Or even even offensive line help. You know what I'm saying? Can we, you know what I'm saying? Let's let's help Sam. You know, let's do it. But, you know, okay. Morgan, I don't really no knock it. You know what I'm saying? So going down to the next fourth round pick, and we pick up Cam Clark, baby. Cam Clark. Let me tell you something. I think he's a decent, you know, tackle. He's a guy that can come in and give us some help. I know also there's a lot of analysts saying that maybe he'll slide into guard. Um, you know, maybe that's something that we can do with him too because there's still some questions on this offensive line. I know people, I love Makai Becton. I like that selection. Um, you know, I like Connor McGovern. But you look at the rest of this line and there are some suspect, you know, moments there, particularly if you get to that right side. Winters, a lot of people have questions about him. Alex Lewis, I know who we brought back, but he was on that line last year. I saw him get used. And if we start Becton at left tackle, Fant at right tackle is just like... You know, George Fan is, <laughs> he is not, you know, he's not a guy that I necessarily want starting, even though I know we're paying him kind of starter money. So bringing this kid in and just allowing him, you know, to see, hey, where is he at? Is, is he a guy that can end up pushing to be a starter? Or is he a guy that we can bring along right now? Kind of having that depth role in case a guy goes down, he can step in and kind of fill a role there, I'd have no problem with that whatsoever. So this is a kid I think that is a you know, solid little pick here. He's coming in, he's going to play. So um, next pick, round five, we talk about Bryce Hall, baby. Ooh, this is a kid at corner that I'm like, hmm, this was, this was a solid little pick. You know what I'm saying? This was a solid little pick. I like him. Here's the problem with him. Injury issues. <laughs> it's injury issues. Every time, you know, it's injury issues. I know he's had issues with his ankle. I think he had surgery 
Um, but, you know, before that, dude, he was looking decent. He was looking like a guy that could really ascend up that board, but I think a lot of these injury issues kind of knocked him down. So you got to wonder, hey, is that ankle good? Um, is he going to be able to continue to play, you know, through that stuff? Um, you know, can they bring him in and kind of work on that stuff? If if he can if he can stay good and healthy and that ankle doesn't continue to be a problem, I think he's a guy, man, that could make some impact here as well, particularly at our cornerback spot, which, you know, has some issues. We talked about it. You know, Pierre Desir, uh, we got Poole. But that second spot is kind of open. Yeah, you got Bless Austin. I know you talk about Harrison, but it's not like set in stone. If this kid can come in and really have a solid impact, and I get it, he's a fifth rounder. Don't scream at me. Say, oh, Joe, you, you know, you're being way too positive. Look, you can come in and, you know, make some impact as a guy, especially on a spot that's open. So if he can stay good and healthy, I think, I think we're all right. And, again, a lot of these guys that we drafted, too, are high-character guys. I think that's really big as well. Um, I know a lot of people kind of say, oh, well, who cares about that? You know, and we talk about the athleticism of these players and how fast they run and, you know, their catching radius is and, you know, what they do in their three-cone drills and, you know, how great they block and all that stuff. But also being a high-character guy is big as well because a lot of that in the games, especially in the NFL, your mental fortitude will be tested. There are going to be times where you're going to be down, you know, in a football game and you got to fight to come back. You know, if you're a guy that can do all the, you're a great blocker, but you don't have it upstairs to push, you know, when things are, are really crumbling around you, to be able to hold things up when things aren't going as well, to be able to sustain yourself and settle and then continue to fight in the trenches and to pull a game out, dude, it doesn't matter how great or gifted you are. You're not, you're just not going to make that impact that you should make in those crucial times. Uh, we've seen it throughout the NFL with guys that, you know, are great players, but they just upstairs, they don't have it. And they never really live up to the hype or live up to what the, where they're supposed to be because they just they can't get it together upstairs. So I like that as well. So, um, again, we're going to move down. We're going to talk about uh, round six. because That's a selection with Braden Mann. Um, I like this selection. Uh, you know, I know a lot of people are looking at it like, hey, he's a punter. Who cares? Like, that matters a lot, okay? <laughs> There's a lot of hidden yards in special teams, all right? And and with Lackland Edwards right now being a free agent, we needed some, a guy to fill that hole. Here's a guy that won the Ray Guy Award. He steps in. I think he'd be a guy that could really put on, you know, some, some solid punts here. Um, special teams is big. It's really, really big. We've seen in the past where we've had really bad special teams play, particularly at punter, and it's cost us a lot of games. So I like this selection as well. Um, and as a whole, with this all being done, I, I, I like the draft by Joe Douglas. I think he did a solid job. Um, again, I wanted more wide receiver. I know they're probably going to attack that market in the undrafted free agency uh, market. But if that, that's pretty much the only knock I really have on this, on this draft was, hey, could we have taken maybe one or two more wide receivers? I would have I wanted to see more. Uh, but I, I think that this is a solid draft. And I also love the trades that he made. He got value. And he was able to turn that value, you know, into, into players that can come and help at different spots. He didn't get fleeced in his trade downs. He didn't get used and abused. He said, okay, boom, I understand I have some needs. Let me move down, gain some solid capital, and then turn that into a player that can really help me in this spot. So, again, for me, the only head, the only head scratcher was Morgan, and it's because he's in the fourth round. Um, I wanted more wide receiver, but I really think that this was a solid draft. So, Comment down below. I know this is a long video. <laughs> I had to give it to you folks. I wanted to talk to you. Let me know what you folks think. Comment down below. Let me get your thoughts on each uh, pick. How do you feel about Ashton Davis? Where do you think that he fits into the defense? What are your thoughts about Mims? How do you feel about Jabari being drafted in the third round? Do you think you can stay healthy? Give us some edge rush. What about Braden Mann? Do you, do you like his selection as well? Bryce Hall out there, do you think he can make some significant impact at corner? Where do you think he'll fit? Where do you think his role will be? I want to hear from you folks, man. I really want to hear from you. So you folks have a good one. Peace.